but is it worth $6,000? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing a very special unboxing of this Fendi and Tiffany collaboration piece. Now I am so excited to unbox this because it was really difficult to get this bag. This bag has been created so much buzz since last year and I'm happy that I was able to grab it. If you are new here, my name is Abby, better known as The Rich Aunt, before it became popular and my channel focuses on travel, fashion, and lifestyle. So if you like that kind of stuff, or if you like me, or even if you don't like me, still consider subscribing. So for today's look, I actually decided to wear a few of my Tiffany pieces in celebration of this Fendi and Tiffany collaboration. Now I have more pieces than this, but I was just like, hey, these are the pieces I'm gonna grab. Start with my bracelet. I am wearing my Tiffany T cuff, along with the Tiffany T ring, and the Tiffany Atlas ring. And these are in sterling silver. I am wearing my Tiffany T wrap ring. This is in sterling silver. Now these four rings are in gold. So I have yellow gold, rose gold, white gold, and another yellow gold. They all have diamonds except for one of them and has rubies. And wear my classic Return to Tiffany bracelet. Mine actually um, doesn't say Return to Tiffany. I opted for the plain one. I am wearing my Tiffany T necklace and I'm wearing these Tiffany hardware ball earrings. So this is my Tiffany look for the day. When a lot of people think of luxury brands, they usually assume that it's a European brand. But did you know that Tiffany is actually the oldest jewelry house out there? It's been around since the 1800s, whereas a lot of other jewelry houses has started in the 1900s. Now this bag has been created some buzz since last year, and I'm here to tell you if I like the bag and if I think it's worth it. So this is gonna be the first time that I am unboxing it. I have not seen the bag yet, and this is my first time opening it. So before I open this piece, I do wanna share my experience on how I got it. Awesome. Some background info surrounded this piece. Fendi celebrated the 25th anniversary of the iconic Fendi baguette. During the celebration, they had a huge fashion show with 25 different baguettes. It had some designed by Marc Jacobs and even a special baguette designed by Sarah Jessica Parker herself, who is known to have put the baguette on the map. Last year, around August, September, there was some buzz that Fendi and Tiffany were collaborating. You started seeing pictures surfacing online, and I did see some influencers being able to preview these pieces. This bag released on January 5th and that's exactly when I got this bag however I don't know why I didn't have much interest to open it up until now and it is now a few weeks later I can remember January 5th morning when this bag dropped I actually was online trying to see if I can purchase it however when it comes to these kind of things I do not even bother I literally go on websites for the fun of it because I always feel like I have zero luck and a zero chance of getting these items so per usual I went online and I tried to see if I could snack one of course I couldn't there was like a waiting room it was just madness and chaos I was just like hey whatever I did not expect to get it I find that the best bet to purchase this item was to actually go into store or speak to your essay at either Fendi or Tiffany for me I purchased my item at Tiffany not the Fendi store my SA from Tiffany actually reached out to me and offered me the bag get right into this bag and as from the title you already know what bag I'm speaking of so one side says Fendi and the other side says Tiffany and if you are new here or if you do not know me when I am shopping do not take the brand bag I always get a discreet bag so that's why it's folded because I put it in a discreet bag I really love that they opted for the iconic Tiffany blue opposed to the iconic Fendi yellow Tiffany blue is just such a special staple it's like no other blue so this bag retails for $5,500. That is a lot of money. I think this is the most I have ever paid for a bag in my entire life. This is ridiculous. So it was $5,500 and with New York City sales tax, it was an additional 488.13, bringing this to pretty much $6,000 for a purse, a Fendi Tiffany purse at that. Tiffany baguette cure details, medium Tiffany baguette, silk satin and sterling silver Tiffany blue and now finish. Here it goes. And the dust bag says Tiffany and then the other side says Fendi. Since I purchased it from Tiffany, I'm gonna face the Tiffany side to the camera. And the moment we both have been looking forward to is our first look and thoughts of this bag. 
it's beautiful. I can't deny it. It's a beautiful bag. Let me not get this too close to my red lip because we don't want to damage this bag as soon as I get it. So I went for the satin only because the leather was not available because I think spending this much on a satin bag is a little astronomical. Satin does not have the same longevity as leather. I'm going to be very honest. This satin feels so luxurious. Like it looks so good. All of the hardware on this is made with Tiffany silver. This bag comes with two straps. How I don't feel like the straps are practical. This one is supposed to be just so that it can be a top handle. And this one just makes it into a shoulder bag. It does not make it into a crossbody, especially if you have big boobs like me. Or even if you don't have big boobs, it's gonna hit you really small. So as you can see, I am standing up and this is where the, the straps hit me. This bag is pretty lightweight. I'm gonna assume maybe the leather bag can be heavier than this one. I really love how they incorporated two Tiffany collections into this. This is the Tiffany T collection that is in the blue enamel. The T collection does have the double T's and it does come in enamel and different stones such as Mother of Pearl and Onyx. So I love that little incorporation within the Fendi S. And I really love that we have this classic return to Tiffany charm, which is a classic that Tiffany is very much known for. We have the two D rings where the straps are gonna be hooked onto. The inside is leather, and I am just imagining if I got the leather one that I wanted. This leather is so buttery. You can see the bag is very flexible and flimsy. Um, it is not a structured bag at all. The inside is silk, and it's very roomy. There's a lot of room in this bag and a lot of space. There is only one pocket where I have my authenticity card inside of it. And that's it. This so bag. I'm not exactly sure how many bags were made. It would have been lovely if they would have put like one out of 20 for each of the bags to show how limited it is. So there are rumors that there were around 70 or 100 bags made worldwide collectively in all of the different variations. This collection came with quite a few items. There was the leather baguette, the satin baguette, they had a leather micro baguette, and they also had a micro satin baguette. There were also some charms, and I think this was the best value for money because the micro was around $3,000, and it's never that serious. I don't care what kind of silver it is. I don't care if it's silver from Claire's or silver from Tiffany's. $3,000 for that little thing is just unethical. I did put some thought into which piece I wanted from this collection. At first, I thought about the Nano Char because it was one of the least expensive items. But then I thought about it. I'm going to pay $3,000 for a charm. Like literally, I can fit probably about four or six of those charms onto this. So I was like, I might as well spend the extra money and go for an actual bag because it's going to be more practical and make more sense as far as the value. I feel like every time I'm going to reach for this bag, I'm going to make sure my hands are are squeaky clean with no kinds of oil no kinds of dirt and definitely no makeup on it and to be honest I do not want to have to go through that with any bag in my collection so if you pay attention to my videos you do see a few blue boxes in the back I've been a Tiffany's customer I've noticed since LVMH has taken over Tiffany they have been collaborating with a lot of different brands I am kind of a collector of Tiffany collaboration first time they collaborated was with Supreme and I actually did get a few things from that collection. Here was their collaboration with Supreme. The dust bag is in this Tiffany blue. So it does say Supreme on one side and then Tiffany and Co on the other. Then on this hanging charm it says please return to Supreme. New York instead of Tiffany, New York. I did see that they are collaborating with Nike very soon and the sneakers are trash. Like I've never seen a sneaker lock so much in my whole entire life. Out of all of the collaborations and of all of the designs that they could have done for an Air Force One, they did a black Air Force One. Everyone from New York knows that Black Air Force energy is not good energy. They could have did a crisp white Air Force One with a nice Tiffany blue check. We all know that Tiffany is an iconic American brand. However, it has been taken over by this French powerhouse. And we can tell that room of decision makers is not from a diverse team because no native New Yorker 
would allow Black Air Force Ones to be the collaboration piece. You hear me? I even like the diamond supply, Tiffany Dunks. They should have drew inspiration from that, honestly. I had no idea that I was a baguette girl until now. So I was able to grab three out of the four of my baguettes. So this is one of my favorites. My mom got me this one for my birthday. It is a double baguette. So it's two baguettes for the price of one. I love it and you can hold it like this. And it also does have a strap and the strap is blue. So you can wear it as a crossbody or you can double it up and wear it as a shoulder bag. One of my favorite baguettes. Next up, this is my oldest baguette. This one was actually my mom's and she handed this one down to me. And I used to wear this a lot in high school, but as I got older, I started wearing more bigger bags. And now that um, I don't have to carry like laptops and school books anymore, I do find myself wearing this more. I don't wear this often and I do need to clean it. It was in storage. This is a cage baguette. Oh. So it does have a longer strap on the inside, which is so cool. And it has like these side pockets, one for your ear pods, and this cage can actually come off. It's removable. And then it comes with a top handle and then it also comes with another like medium size um, strap handle. So this one is one of my all time favorite. I want to give a warm welcome to the baguette family, the Tiffany Fendi baguette. I do believe this has been one of the hardest bags to get. I do not know much people with it. I'm the only person I know with it. All right, so let's share my thoughts on this bag. Yes, Fendi and Tiffany are two iconic brands coming together to create this bag. So a lot of that plays a part into the pricing of this bag. And for $5,500, I do not think this bag is worth it. I know I do have the bag, but would I recommend getting it? I say if you are a lover of collective things, if you are a lover of Fendi baguettes, or if you are a lover of Tiffany's to that extreme, then sure, go for it. Um, You're gonna find value in it, but I feel like any average person, Fendi does have bags in this color, and Tiffany does have bags in this color. They have like different tote bags and things like that. I really don't think it's that serious for them to have a bag at this value. I don't think it's worth it. And I do not think it's worth it for a satin bag. Satin is very luxurious and you do have to baby it. However, when you're spending this amount of money, I want to be able to use my items. I do not want to have to baby it and have to worry about a stain, whether it be water or some kind of colored liquid getting onto it. Another thing I also thought about was the tarnishing of the silver and the satin mixture together. A lot of my Tiffany's pieces has tarnish and I feel like if this is not stored in the right temperature, the tarnish is going to get onto the satin, if that makes sense. So when things tarnish, it does have like a residue and being that it's gonna be near the satin, I feel like it can also destroy the satin, which completely makes this bag not worth it because the bag is gonna get damaged just by simply existence. So you guys, let me know your thoughts on this bag. Now, I cannot deny she is a beauty. She is gorgeous. I love everything about her. I do really enjoy the satin. I think it makes it look very chic and it looks very elegant and elevated. And I love all of the detailing. I do love the collaboration between Tiffany and Fendi. They really tied everything together seamlessly. Like the Fendace I thought was beyond tacky. I did not like it at all. I think everything looked so confusing and just so jumbled together. As far as this one, I feel like they were very intentional and intricate. What I really love is how they meshed the two brands together and made it make sense. That's really important as far as with these collaborations because we all know collaborations can get very tacky very easy. All right, so I wanna hear from you guys. Do you like the bag and do you think it's worth it? You can definitely like it and not think it's worth it the same way I do, or you can not like it and not think it's worth it. Make sure you leave your comments below. Thank you for tuning into my video. Do consider giving it a big thumbs up. It does help with the algorithm. I really appreciate it. And make sure you check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. The Rich Aunt signing out. Bye.